Well, good morning. Thank you very much for joining me on this video. I got a question from an agent the other day. He was selling a commercial property and he had this particular clause in the offer. Price allocation. The buyer and the seller shall agree on the purchase price allocation on or before closing date. He said to me, what does that mean and is it a clause I need to be concerned about? And I thought maybe we should take a minute or two and talk about the sale of commercial buildings, including a business, and how you evaluate it, both for assigning a purchase price or assigning an asking price, and also for tax purposes. When you've got a commercial building and business, there's a number of components that are used in making up the price. There's first of all the bricks and mortar. What's the building and the land worth? What's it worth as it is? No business in it, nothing happening, just that particular structure. That's the starting point. Then we need to look at the interior finish. If you were renting, we'd call it leasehold improvements. The walls, the partitioning, the things that make it fit for the particular business that's operating inside. Now, that may or may not have value. Certainly in a commercial space that you're renting out, one tenant may have spent thousands of dollars on interior finish. The next tenant with a different use may be ripping them all out. So it may or may not have value, but it comes into play. Then we got the chattels and the trade fixtures. The things that the, the uh, occupant that's running the business has done and needs to operate their business. Then we've got inventory or the stock. Now, uh, there's two ways you handle this on a sale. One is, and you usually don't build it into the purchase price, but you can. Usually what you do is you arrange that on closing, you inventory the existing stock and the buyer agrees to pay the wholesale price for the stock. or you can include it in the price at the time of the drafting of the offer and the seller covenants undertakes that he will maintain stock at current levels. And then there's no inventory to be done on closing. And then there's finally the thing called goodwill. Now I want to say something about goodwill. Goodwill is a reflection of the profit that the business is making the way it's run now. And you've got to spend some time on the profit and loss statement to figure it out. See, sometimes the owner of the property is running the business and he's not drawing a salary. And so the shows that it's making a profit, but he'd have to replace himself with an employee. If he did that, it wouldn't be making any profit at all. So there may not be anything in goodwill, or there may be, and you have to look at very closely at the books. Depending on the type of business, it can be worth anywhere between two, two and a half to four, up to I've seen as high as nine times net for goodwill. So that's the other missing component. Now, when you've got all these things, you go through all these things, you come up with an asking price for the bricks and mortar and the business that it contains. And then when it comes time to closing the transaction or hopefully uh, negotiating a price on the transaction, you may have to, as this clause suggests, allocate value. And the reason for that is this, taxes. You see, the person running the business will have depreciated his interior finishings, perhaps. He will have depreciated his equipment for sure. He may have depreciated the building. But all these things are depreciated at a different rate. Your building's depreciated at 4%, not counting the land, which you don't pre depreciate. Your equipment may be depreciated at 20%. And so he's got equipment that may have cost thousands and thousands of dollars new, and he's depreciated it down to almost nothing. Now he's selling the building and the business, and the new buyer is going to start depreciating based on the assigned value at the sale. If the seller has a high figure placed on the uh, equipment, then uh, he's going to have to pay recapture to Revenue Canada. So he wants it as low as possible. The buyer wants it as high as possible because he wants to be able to depreciate it. So that's one of the negotiating things that you have to do. Now I should say also, at the time of the sale, it can be done one of two ways. It can be done either as a share sale or as an asset sale. And there's a huge difference. If you're doing a share sale, none of this allocation of price makes any difference. 
What you're doing is you're stepping into the seller's shoes and you're taking over his business exactly the way it appears on the books at that moment in time. And so if he's depreciated his equipment down to $28, that's the depreciation amount you've got left, $28. You can't do anything about it regardless of what you paid for it because you're taking over his business and you're buying the shares. If it's an asset purchase, then you're going to assign the value on all these things. It may be or it may not be a reflection of what the actual true market value is, or it may be something that's negotiated between the buyer and seller, something that makes sense for the buyer and the seller can live with. So that's why that clause would have been in there. It's something you need to consider when you're selling a building that contains a business and you're selling both the building and the business. Hope that makes sense. I want to thank you very much for taking time to watch this video. I'll talk to you again very soon.